Shenmue. Yeah, the big one. It exists. Um, Sony's E3 press conference just gone. Shemi 3 was announced. Tears were shed. Uh, Stocking Kleenex rose rapidly. Um, Many memes were posted throughout the internet. Everyone cried. Um, it's back. Crazy. So I never honestly thought it would be true. I thought it was going to be one of those jokes that in 20 years time I'd be like, great, maybe this is the year for, e- for Shemi 3. But Okay, for, for those who don't know us, this is the position. I'm a massive Shemi fan. Massive Sega fan back in the day. Um, played one and two religiously. Almost every year, I would say, apart from last year, I didn't play it. Um, and you don't have much history with Shemi at all. Oh, yeah, I mean, my Sega history is pretty limited, generally. So my Sega knowledge is pretty much you. But obviously, yeah, we have spoke about Shemi many a time. Yeah, you're trying to convince me of this crazy game, that way you drive a forklift around and, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so for the base of this, um, we're now going to call this the Shemu Addicted Podcast, or SAP, yeah. <laughs> instead of Casually Addicted Podcast. Um, I can't believe it's actually happened. Yeah, because I, I honestly thought, like, I thought the last guy would be announced, because everyone's been talking about that so yeah, much, and that, it was like, that's kind of almost obvious in a way, that they needed some big thing like that. I mean, it was never cancelled. Yeah, and that's it. That's the but thing. I never in a million years thought they would just be like, Shemu 3. I mean, even like the Final Fantasy VII remake... Is was more expected because Final Fantasy is a thing that still exists. Yeah, yeah. Let's remember, there's not been a new Shemi game for 14 years. Yeah, exactly. It's just been a long time coming. But I think the way they're doing it is the best way as well. Because I mean, like with the Kickstarter way, I mean, mm. because it just shows this, this is how many people want this game. It was the, what, yeah. the quickest funded Kickstarter game ever, or yep. Kickstarter project ever, and it's still going now. It's just. Yeah, crazy really I think we're currently at about 3.6 million dollars um, I think it was the quickest Kickstarter game ever I think it was the quickest project to reach 2 million dollars yeah. something like that anyway um, but yeah I literally was in shock when it happened <laughs> the, the conference just stopped for you at that moment I, I still have not watched the conference after Shemi reveal I don't oh, really? know what happened well, so you haven't seen the Uncharted stuff I came back briefly at the Uncharted <laughs> bit um I think there was some Call of Duty. Mm. Um, I think Destiny showed up, did they? I can't remember. Was that something say. happened? I don't I can't know. Remember. Um, but yeah. Um, now the thing with the Shenmue Kickstarter is there's been a lot of false information out there mm-hmm. regarding the whole sort of process, I guess. Yeah. I mean, from someone who isn't too aware about what Shenmue is or, or what's really happening, what's your understanding so far? Because obviously you're like neutral. Yeah. In all this. So... From your outside perspective, what do you think is the deal? I mean, the deal is that the people have spoken and they haven't listened, you know? <laughs> like, I mean, but, I mean, I guess the thing is, it was... The, the stories I keep seeing recently is about whether it's Sony funding them or if it's purely Kickstarter or whatever. Mm-hmm. And that seems to be the big thing at the moment, is people are saying, if Sony's funding it, why do they need to use Kickstarter yeah. kind of thing? Um but then I always, I mean, personally, I don't see why that's a bad thing. If it was to be, okay, we got four, five million from Kickstarter, and then Sony were like, okay, they've seen the interest in it, obviously, obviously know the interest in the game, mm. then they can be like, we'll, we'll match that. You have whatever it is now, massive old, you know, great game. That's what everyone wants in the, the day, isn't it? Everyone wants the great game. So, but then at the same time, it's like, why do we have to back it if okay. Sony are going to fund it? Let me stop you right there. This is kind of what's happening, and I want to get the word out. I mean, I know we're not like a massive podcast or anything like that. Um, but you shall heed But I, th- I think it's important to note that Sony are not putting any money towards the actual development of the game. Um, <coughs> and I know there's kind of like a, a small campaign starting of like, you shouldn't back this Kickstarter, you're chucking your money away, blah, blah, blah. Sony are essentially treating Shemi 3 as almost like an indie game. I think that's the best like, way to do it, really. They have a, an interest in promoting it as a PS4 game just like they would Call of Duty um, or any game that's on the PS4 platform. They have an interest in promoting it on their platform. Um, so obviously they're going to help with marketing. Um, but in terms of development, the majority of the funds raised by the Kickstarter will be the development cost that users Uki and his team have. So is it, um, it is PS4 exclusive, isn't it? Or is it, Well, what's the sitch? The situation at the minute is that obviously Sony have helped with the funding. 
no, sorry, sorry, with the marketing and the promotion. <laughs> God, even I'm going down the hole here. Um, so at the minute, the only announced platforms are PC and PS4. Okay. As for Xbox One and Wii U, I tend to, <laughs> I tend to simply say Wii U. Um, there is a chance for that later because it's not a first-party game. Yeah, yeah. Um, so sure. how does it work with regards to Sega then? So have they given the go? Is that how they just given the go ahead for Shenmue Three? That's what it is. Eventually, Sega has said, "Look, you, you can use the Shenmue thing. <laughs> do what you want. You just pay us a small fee. When, yeah. You know, it's all said and done." That's Sega's method these days. It's like you want to use what? That's no problem. Just write the check, and <laughs> you can use what you want. I would imagine it would be similar to how Bayonetta Two. Oh uh, yeah, happened. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, I think. I mean. <laughs> The world exploded. It was one of those questions as well because I mean, for years you've you've spoken about how big this game is, and I've always kind of like appreciated. You know, there must be a big community for it, kind of thing. But then it was when that Kickstarter started, and you just saw the number just rocket up. It was like, yeah. okay, this is a seriously big deal, apparently, <laughs> to like so many people. So here's here's another question as well because I'm curious because obviously I'm infatuated with Shemmy. I mean, I, I spent an hour last night playing darts and Shemmy one. <laughs> it's literally just darts, um, and that that's like my thing. Um, from an outside point of view, like, what do you know of Shemmy? Because you've never played the games, you've never owned a Sega console. You, I mean, the only exposure you have to it is me blabbering on. About yeah. It. So literally, I mean, if it wasn't for you, I'd probably know nothing. Yeah. Almost. I, I mean, I, I'd quite happily say that. I mean, and the only things I do kind of remember you talking about now is the forklift racing. Yep. Awesome. I remember there was something to do with your dad gets like, killed or yep. captured something like that. And then I remember you said at the end of Shenmue 2, you were in some cave. Was it a cave? You were yep. somewhere and it, yep. like, massive cliffhanger ended you. And then that's kind of what I remember. Okay. okay. <laughs> do you know what? I'm impressed. I remember quite a bit. Do you know what sort of game it is, though? Not really, no. no. Okay. Because that, that was, I guess, a question. Because I saw in the... Well, where it was somewhere, and they were talking about it being potentially open world. If they mm. get to a certain level, kind of thing. Oh, no, it was, was it you that said it that? It probably was me, yeah. Yeah, Because <laughs> yeah. yeah. that would be quite interesting. It's... Yeah, I mean, Yu Suzuki said that if we get to $5 million, then one of the things that he wants to do, he can do. Yeah. Ten mil what $10 million does is it gives Shemi 3 a, a truly open world. But... But I take it it was never like that before anyway. Well, it depends what you... I think he's got a different, different definition to open world than what we have now. Yeah, I mean, it's not like going around Skyrim and the Witch 3. No, or, like or GTA, it's not like that. It's, um, it's more having almost like a closed world, but being able to do everything. In GTA, you've got, I don't know, let's say 2,000 buildings. You can go into maybe 20 of them. Yeah. In Shemi, you might have... Well, you will have like a smaller lot of buildings, mm. but you can go in... 90% of them yeah, yeah, and yeah. do things it's a much um, more like flourished environment yeah I mean well I remember when I was little um, playing Shami 1 going around Ryo Hazuki's house the main character opening up under his uh, his TV cupboard and there's a Sega Saturn in there a Sega Saturn <laughs> yeah. with games um, that was a revelation to me when I was young <laughs> um, so it's it's being able to almost have a second life I guess yeah like if you want to you just kind of go about your business and you are this person kind of thing you do what you want to do like if you want to go and you know chase the revenge story for your father and chase down Landy you can if you want to go to the arcade and play Outrun or the, the boxing machine you yeah. can do that go get a job do your forklift driving or, or whatever <laughs> yeah. or run a gambling stool or you know kind of just just do whatever you want but you really choose what you want to be but it's not just that this, this is <laughs> the thing like that's enough for a game in itself but it also has a fighting system that is almost literally Virtua Fighter. Yeah. Like it has such a robust fighting system. Yeah, yeah. Um, but then it's got QTE events as well, mm. similar to like Heavy Rain or something like that. It sounds like it was a game made for its time, really. It was the first open world game. Mm. I th if it wasn't the first, it was one of the first. Yeah. And it was the m most groundbreaking. Um, and I think probably for me, having Shenmue 3 come back isn't. I'm not excited about the fact that it could be the same, but just what Yusuke might come up with next. Yeah, so I guess that's the big question as well. Is like, okay, this game was made 14 years ago, and obviously you still love it now. Mm. But it's like, what's it going to be like? You know, 14 years down the line, and how much you know the gaming industry itself has changed. Yeah, what's the game gonna, itself going to be like? What's it going to feel like? You know. Yeah. Are they going to have all these things they used to have, but it's going to be you know, updated, or is it just going to be something completely? Because I have no idea. Yeah, I mean, I mean, Yu Suzuki himself, 
pretty, um, you know, I think I'm correct in thinking that every single game he's ever published changed the gaming industry in yeah. some way. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I'll, you're probably too young um, to be aware of some of his games, but like Outrun, Hang On, Afterburn, all these arcade yeah. classics. Yeah. Like before you Suzuki, like, um, you know, you'd go into a Japanese arcade and they'd just be sitting at some little table or whatever. Yeah. And then he made a, a motorbike game called Hang On mm. and he put literally put a motorbike <laughs> in the arcade and everyone's like, what, what is this? What's going on? <laughs> yeah. There's a motorbike in it. Um, but no, it was just a game. Um, like, he is literally Sega's Miyamoto or yeah. Kojima. It's just he took a fourteen-year holiday. Yeah, so that's the thing. The question is, like, what's he gonna, what's he got cooking away now? Well, I mean, he had fourteen years to sit on it and never think about it. So I'm sure he must have some yeah cool ideas. Having a brief look at the Kickstarter goals for Shemi Three, um, we've got a thing called a rapport system, a skill tree system. Don't really know what those are. A rapport system, he said, is something to do with how you treat like other NPCs so how I thought that would be when I first read that was kind of like Mass Effect like you would be able to sort yeah. of build a relationship with certain people maybe or like you'd have that skill tree kind of option you know dialogue options and stuff like that yeah I think the, the skill tree is probably um, self explanatory I mean yeah. in, in the original Shemu and Shemu 2 <laughs> you would like sort, sort of train um, you'd, you'd spar like your fighting moves and stuff like that yeah. and the more times you've done a move the better, the better and more powerful it mm. became. Um, so I imagine that's probably that evolved somehow. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, skill trees is a pretty big thing. Like, almost every game these days has some kind of skill tree. Yeah, yeah. Um, the more interesting one, though, is the one that Hughes mentioned himself, the character perspective system. Yeah. No idea what the hell that means. Which, I've got an idea. First person mode. Reading, <laughs> <laughs> reading from... Um, I think it's in Famitsu, the Japanese magazine. There's two very influential characters um, in the story, uh, Shenhua, and I won't name the other one for spoiler reasons because it's someone making a return in three, so I don't want to spoil you. Apparently it's something like you get to see things from their point of view, but you don't control them. Okay. So I don't know what that means. Yeah. Um, But that's the feature. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's like the the biggest stretch goal at the moment, isn't it? So that is kind of his. Yeah. You would think like that is going to be seriously cool if we hit that kind of thing. Yeah, I, I mean, he's saying ten million dollars. I can't see it making ten million. Yeah, ten million is. Really, I feel like the momentum's died down now, but I still feel like it can go up significantly. Yeah. But, but not ten million, you know. No, no. I think like with Kickstarters, and I saw <laughs> Ukulele was the first one I backed. This is the second one. Like they tend to die down pretty quickly. Yeah. Once the initial kind of week is over you yeah. kind of feel like okay this is kind of going to slowly yeah. be what it is and then the last few days they ramp up again I think unless Craig hits the you know wins the Euro Millions this, this Friday then <laughs> don't worry you'll get your you get 20 yeah, million mate. I've, don't worry I've done the Euro Millions tonight yeah. I'm, I'm in I'm in um, yeah no I think um, a realistic goal for Shenmue 3 is probably to beat Bloodstained Kickstarter which is the highest gaming one ever at 5.5 okay um, I think that's realistic um, and I, I think afterwards they will look into other funding methods mm. after the Kickstarter to make the 10 million I, I think they'll get there but I don't think they'll do it through just Kickstarter yeah that's the thing you mean like we said earlier with the traction it's clearly got already you would think there's going to be plenty of people willing to invest in that kind of thing yeah you know without a doubt yeah it's clearly going to be a hit kind of thing so oh yeah I'm yeah. interested well, I hope, I I'm hope interested so. I mean, I mean Yu Suzuki's already started talking about Shemi 4. Yeah. So He's Shem- back, mate. It's back with the vengeance. They're going to come out one week after the other. Like, there you go. <laughs> so Shemi 3 is not the end of the story, in case you were wondering about that. Um, now, I've backed it, as if you hadn't already guessed. Um, are you backing it? I will back it. Yeah. Yes. I will back it. Yes. I mean, I'm one backed. Committed. It'll be my, th- be my third Kickstarter. Yeah. So it'll be that, Ukulele, and that Shivery. That's yeah. actually what it's called. Kingdom Come Deliverance. That's, that's it. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Still waiting for that, but are you just going to go for the game? Yeah, yeah, that's, just that's fine. Just because this is unda- this is unterritory, um, <laughs> uncharted waters for me, really. I, I, I don't understand why they're only selling it for twenty nine dollars. That seems really cheap. That's the weird thing about Kickstarter, though, because you can kind of even like with ukulele, you get it so cheap. It's almost like okay, you do have to wait a couple of years. Ukulele, I can understand though, because. It's a small game. It's going to be like a little 3D platformer. Yeah, it's in that same ballpark of, you know, the downloadable games, like mm. 20, 20 quid, yeah, maybe something yeah. like that. 
But, I mean, Shemi 3 and the Shemi games before are big, yeah. big games. Yeah. Big You're clearly going to get your money's worth for $29. Games. It's just like, I mean... It's like a no-brainer price. It's strange because it will come out, clearly, and it will be on the PS Store for £50. If you want to... Maybe. <laughs> I don't know, but... <laughs> Also, where's the PS4 retail copy? Come on, you. Let's get that on there. <laughs> um, I think I'm going to go for the $175 one. Yeah. So what do you what do you get? So for the $175 one, we get the game. Um, I can either get PC digital or proper or PS4 digital. Yeah. Uh, what else do we get? A backup only advanced technique scroll. Twenty capsule toy tickets in game. What's uh, a capsule toy? Oh my god. Oh mate, these were like. Amiibos before Amiibo. <laughs> so what you would do in Shemu, this is another thing you can do, is you know, you'd, you'd go to like a little, I don't know what you call it, like a little box, and you know like you twist it? Oh yeah, and I know it what pops you mean. out a yeah, little yeah, ball. Yeah, yeah, little toy. Little, and there was literally like Sega toys. Oh, uh, okay. So, but like Amiibo, you'd have ball. different collections. Yeah. So you had like a Sonic collection, Virtua Fighter collection, Virtual On collection, for anyone who remembers Virtual On. Um, I don't know if there was actual consoles or anything. I don't think there was actually. That would have been cool, console toys. Yeah. Anyway, um, yeah, yeah, and you would, I would waste all my Shemmy money on it, like <laughs> literally trying to collect them all. Oh, so you're basically getting a nice little Kickstarter, you know, getting some toys under under your belt straight away. Yeah, so you get uh, twenty for that. Uh, what else do you get? Let's have a look. Um, uh, MP3 downloaded the original soundtrack, uh, a digital art book filled with unreleased illustrations. Um, Shemi 3 t-shirt nice. and what else oh no there's more stuff one of four random figures yeah. uh, one of uh, Rio, Shenhua Chai or Rio on a forklift yeah Rio on the forklift um, all day what else do you get get your name in the credits that'd be cool a printed art book that's a $175 reward if we go all the way up the $10,000 reward <laughs> Gives you dinner with you, Suzuki, and the script for Shemmy 1 and 2. Wasn't that sold, like, instantly? They're all gone. Yeah. And the other one, the other $10,000 one, is you get Rio's jacket, original jacket that they use in the promotional stuff. That's also gone. Yeah, there was only one of that one, wasn't there? There was only one. Yeah. yeah. Um, 10000 Would you have snapped that up if money was no object? Yes. <laughs> I would have gone for the dinner, actually. Yeah. Have but a little chat with the man. It would have been pretty cool. I'd be like, look. But like, sir, you're a legend. When are we finishing this story so I can... <laughs> uh, <laughs> Not be stressed about the next one. I'm already stressed about Shemmy 4. Yeah. Not coming out. <laughs> Can we have a quote? Can you dict it, please? <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, that's that's Shemmy in a nutshell. Not so, Shemmy. I guess a good question would be is if someone was like me and they don't have the time they, that I had to talk to you about Shemmy and have you sell it to me, how would you sell it in you know, 30 seconds? Why should people back it? People should back Shemmy to fulfill people's dreams and fantasies. Um, if you back Shemu 3 on Kickstarter, you will be introduced to a world of imagination <laughs> and just absolute brilliance. That sounds amazing. Um, I, I don't know. Words can't describe what Shemu is. <laughs> I don't know. It's, it, it, I, can't, I need longer than 30 seconds. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Um, I think the best thing about the first two games was its atmosphere. Mm. Like, just walking around... Like uh, the, the towns and cities in both one and two, Kowloon, um, Wanzai, um, even the little Yamanose village in, in Shemi One. It's, I don't know. They just all had their own unique atmospheres yeah. and settings, and like you wanted to be a part of that world. You mm. wanted to do stuff. Um, I did sometimes want to find the killer to my father, but sometimes I just wanted to go to the park yeah. um, and see what was going on there. Uh, like Shemi One yesterday. I'm playing Shemmy One, walking down the road, some old woman walks up to me in game, she's like, um, I don't know where I live. Is this what what, what house is this? this is my house? I'm like, no. So you have to take her you have to take her home. There's a cat you gotta look after. And I'm going it's into like over a minute. Um, oh but yeah, this is way beyond thirty seconds, but yeah. You clearly get the idea that the passion is there. You know. Yeah. I feel like that's what this game's gonna be all about when, isn't it? It's clearly just passion from the fans and it's been 14 years in the making, so... Yeah, I, th I think the um, they should have done a better job on the Kickstarter to introduce people who don't know what Shemu is, but... Yeah, yeah. Um, Although there was a thing, I remember one of the first stretch goals, actually, was some kind of... Something about Shemu 1 and 2. Because what I would really yeah. like is if they just did even like a little Mass Effect 3 comic book style thing if you for, for Mass Effect 2, where you just have like a little comic book, you sum up to me in like a couple of minutes about Shemu 1 and 2, what's going on, let me in. 
I think that's what that is. Yeah, that'd be quite that'd be quite cool. Yeah. I think that'd be a good way of just getting people into it without being bogged down by what S- what it is. Sega, show me one HD, show me two HD. Let's let's talk. Yeah. Let's make this happen. Um, you can just do they, it. They must be sitting there right now and be thinking, "Shit, <laughs> they'll so, find it real quick." Let's, counting the money. Yeah, let's get the other two out right now. Of course, the rumor is they're already made. Well, the Sh- remake. Show the, me um, one or two issues. already made. There's on the like Xbox 360 kind of like I can't remember the official name, like the, the sort of background Xbox Live Store yeah. that developers use. Um, someone know it in the comments, whatever it's called. Um, there's a thing there called Project Barclay One and Two, and Project Barclay is the code name for Shenmue. Right. And they're already made, mm. um, but they didn't release it because of poor sales of Sonic Adventure 2 HD and Jet Set Radio HD. Um, that they kind of backed out of it. I don't know if that's true or not. If you know, let us know. Um, That'd be interesting because I mean, I would certainly play HD remakes to the first two. Yeah, I I wonder how they would go down with people. Yeah, I do wonder, but um, never mind. We should probably stop talking about <laughs> Shenmue. We could be here all day. 